And so, good day everyone. I am Maria Javier. Together with Miriam Hernandez, we would like to warmly welcome you all to our policy brown bag discussion with the theme, Reimagining Quezon City 2050, a city free of drug abuse. So, Miriam? So, ayun po, uh, we, ho hope, we hope that you are all ready to reimagine the future with us. Um, the future of Quezon City, specifically in the topic of substance abuse. As we begin our event, please be reminded of the following. Uh, first, remember to always mute your microphone when not actively speaking to prevent unwarranted noise that may cause a distraction to the one speaking. Second, uh, we permit, we encourage all participants to turn on their cameras if their internet connection permits. Uh, let's make this event a more interactive session. Third, uh, e-certificates will be given to after the event to those who registered. Uh, and lastly, you can utilize the raise hand function of Zoom or use the chat box when asking questions. So, ayun, so we hope you are all energized to spend your Saturday afternoon with us. If you have friends who would also like to join our discussion, feel free to share the details of this Zoom room. Uh, so, um, for the meeting ID and passcode, uh, it will be shared by Mara in the chat box. Okay, so without further ado, let's start um, our program by uh, the opening remarks to be delivered by Dr. Elmer Soriano, our professor in the UP National College of Public Administration and Governance, and our faculty in charge for our PA152 Urban and Metropolitan Governance class. A virtual round of applause, everyone. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon uh, sa ating mga guests. Uh, thank you for spending this time on this ano, afternoon session. Sabado ngayon and ano, no, uh, mara, malaking favor ito sa atin na, na nakadalo kayo sa activity na ito. So the, uh, the Quezon City Futures Lab is an initiative from the UP College of Public Ad. And the idea is maging uh, kaalyado ng LGU yung universities para umusad yung agenda ng universities. Ang thinking dito ay yung, yung syudad natin ay pwede natin uh, isipin na laboratorio natin. No? Hindi naman lab sa paggawa ng shabu, kundi lab para sa paggawa ng mga solusyon uh, sa mga problema ng, ng syudad. Uh, so yun yung talakayan natin this afternoon. In particular, uh, meron tayong ano, no, uh, futures-oriented conversation this afternoon. Ibig sabihin, eh, papag-usapan natin kung ano kaya ang pwedeng mangyari sa, sa syudad natin sa larangan ng substance use over the next few decades. No, usually kasi ang conversations natin pag, pag may programa is ano yung problema, ano yung uh, nangyayari ngayon. Pero malaking bagay yung napapag-usapan rin natin kung ano yung pwede mangyari 10 or 20 or 30 years from now. Kasi yung pangarap na yun, eh, nakakatulong na ma mapalawak at mapalalim yung, yung imahinasyon natin sa mga paraan na pwede natin gawin uh, this, uh, sa present. No? So, um, yun, we're looking forward to an um, um, interesting conversation. And maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Thank you. Back to you, Mara. Okay, record pala to. Yes, yes sir. sir. So, thank you, Sir Elmer, for that warm welcome. Now, let's uh, proceed to the introduction, brief introdu introduction of our panelists, starting with Ms. Cristela Buen, the Action Director of the Quezon City Anti-Drug Abuse Advisory Council, or the CADAC. The CADAC is a policy-making council tasked with leading efforts to establish and maintain a drug-free QC through education and advocacy and treatment and rehabilitation of drug dependents. The CADAC was awarded as the most effective anti-drug abuse advisory group in the country. So, ayun, let us all give a virtual round of applause to Ms. Christel. Apologies po for not including your uh, photo in the slide. Okay, so now let's introduce our second panelist. We have the director of ASEAN Training Center for Preventive Drug Education, 
Um, she is Professor Francis Grace H. Lucapante. She holds both an undergraduate and graduate degree in health education from the University of the Philippines. She has been heavily involved in the designing and implementing substance use prevention programs as the director of the APC PDE since 2012. In 2014, she became a member of the Global Master Trainers of the Colombo Plan International Center for the Credentialing and Education of Addiction Professionals for the Universal Prevention Curriculum. Since then, she has been heavily involved in working with workers from Thailand, Colombia, Malaysia, Fiji, Afghanistan, Kenya, and of course, the Philippines. She is currently serving as an assistant professor in the University of the Philippines College of Education, where she teaches undergraduate and graduate courses in health education. She also provides technical assistance to the Department of Education in developing preventive drug education policies and as well as to the dangerous drug sport in crafting the Philippine Anti-Illegal Drugs Strategy or PADS. Let us all welcome Professor Duca Pante. Thank you so much, Mara. I hope you can hear me. Thank you for the invitation, Dr. Elmer, and to your class. I'm so excited to join the conversation. Hi, Grace. Nice to see you again. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Po. Dr. Duga Pante. Um, and last but not the least, uh, we have Ms. Maria Sara Jane Oros. She is the current prog program director of the Asian Center of for Drug Policy or ACDP. She holds both undergraduate degrees in AB Literature from the University of Santo Tomas and Bachelor of Sciences in International Business and Economics from Otto von Gerich University in Magdeburg, Germany. She is also currently in her fifth year taking up Masters of Arts in Peace and Conflict Studies from the latter university. Last May 2021, she completed her internship with the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime Philippines or UNODC. Uh, her research interests include crime and drugs, human rights and foreign security and policy among others. A round of applause for Ms. Maria Sara Jane Oros. Thank you very much. Hello everybody. So now that we have met our dear panelists, let's get straight um, to the introduction of our reactors for today. We have familiar faces from our PA152 class. Let's also rec recognize their presence. Um, so, our, so to our dear reactors, can you please um, introduce yourselves and um, your affiliations, and what are you most interested in today's policy brown bag discussion? Uh, siguro, we can start with Migi. Ayan. So, sila Migi po ay nag-start din ng kanilang um, policy brown bag discussion last week, which is very successful. Um, let's hear from Migi siguro. Hi. Hello, audible naman ako. Yes, yes. Okay, so, uh, once again, good afternoon everyone. So, yung kagaya nga ng nabanggit ni Mara, no? Nag, kami yung nag-brown bag discussion naman last uh, Saturday. So, ngayon naman ang, uh, for me, yung interest ko dito sa, kasi about to sa city free of drug abuse, no? Kasi it seems na ito yung for the past, di ba, for the past six years, ito yung naging top policy issue ng bansa natin. So I am interested dito kung how will no yung drug abuse uh, policy solution yung mag, mag ano yung magiging uh, mukha nito pagdating ng future kasi di ba so far yung ngayon nakikita natin na ano di ba medyo marami nagki-criticize na problematic no so how can we make it less problematic and more effective by the year 2050. So yun lang. Thank you. Okay, so thank you so much for giving um, us some insight. So now let's proceed with the most important part of today's um, policy brown bag discussion. So Miriam, can you give us some outline for the order of um, our program? So uh, the order of panelists who will each give their insights are as follows. First, we will hear from CADAC to know more about the current situation of substance abuse in Quezon City. 
Then we will hear from Prof. Duca Pande to know more about the interventions and policies of ATC-PDE in terms of preventive drug education. Lastly, uh, we would like to have Ms. Oroz to share us some evidence-based policy efforts from the ACDP. Okay, so let's start with the most important question of today's policy brown bag discussion. So this uh, question is open to all of our panelists. So how do you envision uh, in the best possible scenario for Quezon City in the year 2050 as a city that is free from substance abuse? We can start Siguro with Professor Ducapante. Thank you so much, Mara. So I'm very positive that by 2050, Quezon City would be able to build a wellness culture. So we have moved away from framing it as a drug war, because as we all know, it's really ineffective to do that. So instead of uh, looking at punishment or penalty based, the drug issue will be looked really um, it will really be public health and security issues. So that would be the perspective. And um, Quezon City would be able to, by that time, would have a supportive environment, um, a positive and comprehensive approach, meaning we have, we're looking into the continuum of prevention and treatment. It's really very comprehensive. So we are targeting the different Population. So we have universal selective and indicated interventions, meaning we're not only targeting the general population, we have uh, services for those who are vulnerable populations as well as vulnerable individuals, meaning these are people who have already used substances, but they are not yet dependent. So the approach would really be very comprehensive, but by the time and we would be able to maximize technology for example, now Singapore is using augmented reality, for example, in doing prevention. So I guess by that time, we would also be able, Quezon City would be able to maximize all the re these resources and technology. Thank you. Okay, so maybe we can hear from Ms. Sarah Arroz. Okay, so um, the question is, kung ano yung QC 2050 in the future, right? Like how we envision it. Yes. Okay, so um, first of all, um, I'm hopeful na by 2050, there will be, um, um, substances will be destigmatized. I think we have to start from there. Kasi um, the, with the current climate of the Philippines, right? Parang um, may st the stigma is really high. So, kumbaga, if you are somebody who needs help, um, you have to, parang, um, first of all, it's really hard to admit to yourself that you have a substance abuse problem. And then, um, once you get through that, parang you need help, right? So, kumbaga, san available to for all of the community. And I'm very happy to have heard uh, Miss Francis, uh, Miss Francis, to um, explain the the measures that QC is actually taking. So, in ACDP, naman, what we do is we want to have evidence based research for substance abuse. And um, sana mas madami pang research and, you know, like, um, madaming, like, students like you, you can always contribute to this. Ayun. Ayan. So, we're also very hopeful for that opportunity na makakontribute yung mga students, especially public administration majors, to those um, causes na... Um, na ngayon pa lang na nag-aaral kami ay nakaka-contribute na kami into much bigger causes. So, um, we would uh, love to hear from CADAP's um, action director, Ms. Cristela Buen, but unfortunately, uh, she is suffering from um, internet connectivity issues. So, as a situationer of the current um, policies, uh, initiatives, key challenges that Quezon City is facing, we would like to share with you, uh, Miriam and I will be sharing some of the 
insights that we gathered from on our interview with Miss Cristel Buen. So let's start siguro with their vision. So sabi nga ni Miss Cristel Buen sa amin, ang vision nila for Quezon City is uh, a, a city free from drug abuse. Lagi na lang sinas- nilalagay sa kanilang mga hashtags in their social media pages na um, they want to have a Quezon they want to have Quezon City as a city free from drug abuse. So, ayun na mention, she also mentioned that uh, her vision and Kadak's vision of uh, Quezon City is a city that is number one resilient, second adaptive, and second composed of vision-oriented people. So, hopeful din sila na by 2050, eh, meron na city that is free from substance abuse. Ayan. So, ayan tamang tama. Um, Ms. Krista Buen is uh, in our waiting room. Ayan. So let's check Muna if we are audible. Miriam, can you check with Ms. Christelle? Um wait. I think Nawala Olitra. Ayan. So, while we were waiting for Ms. Buen's um, insights, let's continue siguro muna yung situation natin from our past interview. Um, so, yun nga, uh, from what Ms. Sarah Ari said na there is still uh, the continued stigma on those who are um, dependent on drugs. So, very similar then yung nakitang issues ng kada. Kasi there's also the continued stigma on substance um, use. Um, and tinitingnan siya siguro in our society as a negative behavior. But um, on a organizational perspective from CADA, they want to see it as a mental and as well as a psychological issue. Um, sabi rin niya in our interview, Sabi niya in an interview, there are persons, persistent gaps and inequalities in terms of rehabilitation and treatment programs. Dagdag na rin dito yung limited funding na, kinakaila- na kinakailangan sana to build uh, appropriate, adequate, and proper rehabilitation centers. So Miriam, um, what, what can we add siguro on their key achievements? So ayun, despite these challenges, no, um, CADAP was recently awarded as the most effective anti-drug abuse advisory group in 2019. Um, some of their key achievements from 2016 to 2018, as Ms. Ben uh, um, provided, is uh, yung establishment ng Quezon City Special Anti-Illegal Drugs Education Center to help in the supervising of the drug prevention and educational programs within the city. Andiyan din yung passage of a dangerous drug code of Quezon City na pwedeng mag-serve as benchmark for other LGUs. Then, um, andito din yung pag-organize ng Barangay Anti-Drug Abuse Council functionalization workshops for QC Barangay chairpersons to become effective in their mandate to suppress illegal drugs and criminality at the barangay level. So, she also mentioned yung mga key priorities ng CADAC, which includes preventing drug abuse through education and advocacy, as well as treatment and rehabilitation of drug-dependent patients, and as well as establishing partnerships with various stakeholders. So, now, let's hear off from the side of Quezon City or CADAC. Um, how do you envision, Miss uh, Crystal, your vision of Quezon City in 2050? Hey, uh, good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Good afternoon, ma'am. Yeah, oh, medyo unstable po kasi yung aking signal. So, we envision Quezon City as drug-free QC. Uh, through the programs and projects of CADA. Hello? Yes. Apo. So, um, 
Yeah, as part of the harm reduction, you know, we strengthen our preventive education programs through uh, giving uh, various um, um, education campaign to different sectors. Uh, we, we provide uh, age-appropriate um, materials for, for, uh, for different types of um, audience. Like, for example, for P. Woods, for um, students, um, for high school, and for uh, employees. Uh, thank you po, Ms. Cristel. Um, as a follow-up lang po, um, I would like to ask uh, if dati po, um, um, yung pre-pandemic uh, nagagawa yun, um, paano po ngayong, ano, ngayong uh, pandemic, nung nagka-pandemic, since parang magto two years na rin na, ayun nga, and kaka-implement lang po ng parang face-to-face -face classes, ng pilot test ng face-to-face -face classes. Actually, po, parang, um, Yes po, uh, we utilize the social media. Nag, ano kami, uh, we have um, webinars for out-of-school youth, webinars for, uh, for students, uh, um, high school, uh, senior high and junior high, uh, in celebration of the Drug Abuse Prevention Month. And uh, during the celebration of Ida Dait, uh, we provide webinars for out-of-school youth, uh, we, invite, we invited um, SK, SK uh, officials from different barangays. And uh, we have also, um, we, we, we conduct face-to-face uh, -face na rin, ano, sa, depending upon the request of the uh, barangays. Pero sa schools, talagang ano, webinar lang muna right now. Actually, we have, uh, we, we, we include also the parents and the teachers during the webinar. Uh, last, uh, last week po, uh, meron kami, tapos how can they determine if, uh, hello ma'am, may message naman po. May message naman po. Go ahead po. Yes po. Then, uh, may face to face na din po kami. Uh, <clears throat> like yung nung nakaraan sa mga uh, drivers ng drivers ng mga uh, uh, tawag, to FX drivers, nag-provide kami webinars. Then, nag-provide din kami face-to-face -face sa mga uh, P-Woods po sa, sa barangay. Then, yung mga... Uh, Iba-iba po kasi yung mga... Depending upon the request of the... sa barangay. So, nag adjust yung aming section namin based on the request. So, yun ma'am, yun ang aming ma'am. Okay. So, ayan, very timely yung pag-conduct natin ng policy brown bag discussion now that we are celebrating the National uh, Month for Awareness of Substance Abuse. And gaya nga nang sinabi ni Ms. Cristel Buen, very active ang CADAC in terms of utilizing social media pages, lalo na we're still um, in the middle of a pandemic. Um, pero meron din daw, limited and um, face to face interactions with some of the stakeholders ng Quezon City. So now that we have briefly laid out our in, uh, vision for Quezon City, let's um, dig deeper naman into some of the existing challenges or trends na nakita natin in the process of achieving our goals. So as, a, uh, as our next question for the topic of future scenario building, we would like to ask each of the organizations that we invited, ano po yung mga nakikita niyong challenges or trends na may, na may hinder us from achieving a vision of Quezon City as a city of uh, free from substance abuse. So, let's start siguro with Professor Duha Palte. Thank you very much, Mara. So, 
I guess we really need to look at some of the challenges that we will be facing in achieving our um, drug-free Quezon City by 2050. And um, the first thing is really on the changing political landscape. As we all know, um, continuity and sustainability of the program is really crucial in ensuring that um, all of the stakeholders, for example, would be able to come together and adhere to the international standards on drug use prevention. As of the moment, we have that document. But the main challenge really in promoting um, the stakeholders to ad uh, adhere to it or to implement it is some cultural barriers. Okay, and the perception that the norm is using substances. So I guess it's very important to educate, especially our young people, that the norm is non-use. Statistics from the UNODC and the Dangerous Drugs Board tell us that the majority of people do not use substances. So that would be the message because it's a major barrier when people, especially youth like you, think that... Um, majority are using because uh, peer pressure, especially during adolescence, really very, can be really be very powerful. So let's change the narrative. The norm is non-use. And another is, I guess, um, really soliciting the support of the different stakeholders, specifically our policymakers in um, supporting evidence-based programs and interventions because we all we have this menu of effective programs. UNODC and the WHO already consolidated all these evidence-based programs. So the challenge really is how are we going to sell these evidence-based programs to our decision makers so that by 2050, Quezon City is really implementing them. Thank you. Okay, so now let's hear from Ms. Sarah Oroz. And so ako, I agree with uh, what Professor Ducapante has said. I think I will just add up to it with what we are doing in the Asian Center for Drug Policy. So one of our objective is to defragment all of the substance use efforts. So kumbaga, para um, if they need help in the community, pagka institutional man yan, um, educational, kumbaga, um, tulong-tulong tong mga institution na to para sa... Um, prevention, treatment, and recovery ng mga people who use drugs. So, and also, I would like to emphasize more, of course, on the, sana mas destigmatize siya. Kumbaga, um, people would come out more. So, isang, yun yung pinaka-napakalaking hindrance. Kasi, kapag stigmatize siya, di ba, parang paano mag-flow yung resources dun sa efforts or projects. Kumbaga, um, mapapaisip na, bakit because of the stigma of the parang, bakit namin tutulungan yan, or why would the government try to help them out? So, what as um, Professor Ducapante said, um, kumbaga, it's um, yung, yung substance use, it's multi multi-sectoral. So, kumbaga, kailangan yun. Tulong-tulong, so sana ma-defragment. Um, Ayun po. Okay. So, very substantial. Una, pang, una pa lang question, very substantial agad yung mga nakuha nating insights. So, siguro ang pinaka-important na nakuha doon, Miriam, siguro yung changing the narrative. Uh, it takes a lot of effort talaga to destigmatize this issue. Kasi for a long time, di ba, lagi tayong tumitingin lamang doon sa lens of institutionalized programs. Ayan. Pero it takes a lot of effort. Sabi nga, it takes a community to change uh, uh, these barriers, these narratives. So, Miriam, let's proceed na siguro with our next question. So, for the next question, no, um, na uh, emphasize nga din dun yung importance ng collaboration. Um, um, so, given this, ano, what are the existing collaborations and uh, programs na uh, your respective organizations are currently engaging in. Para in addition, uh, how do you envision these uh, partnerships to grow? Professor Duhapante. Duhapante, Professor. 
Thank you. So, um, the Asian Training Center for Preventive Drug Education is an office based in the University of the Philippines College of Education, and we are being funded by the Dangerous Drugs Board, the drug focal point of the country. So, we have a very strong collaboration with them, um, and the ATSPDE has a drug education committee composed of representatives from the different government agencies um, mandated to help in the, in the drug campaign. So we have a representative from the Department of Health, from the Department of Education, PIA, DSWD, uh, CHED, and of course, the UP community. So we have from UPIS, from UPNISMED, and of course, the UP College of Education. So as you can see, the center um, is really based on the power of collaboration. So coming together to address this global issue. And because it's an action center, so we are capacitating not only our fellow Filipinos, but the prevention professional workforce in Southeast Asia. So I can see that by 2050, Quezon City, because ATCPD is in Quezon City. So I'm seeing that there's a very strong partnership between the center and the local government of Quezon City. Thank you. Yes, sir, Elmer. Yeah, my question ako kay Professor uh, Grace. No? We yes, were Doc. <laughs> we were at UP Diliman at more or less, I had ako sa kanina by a few years. No? Pero naalala ko nung uh, undergrad ako sa Diliman, pag nag kami, lalo na pag uh, gabi ang inuman. Sensius! <laughs> <laughs> Kaya nga, hindi, yun nga yung tatanong ko. Eh, no? At kung deep, ano, no? pag nag-iinuman, kuminsan may small subgroup doon sa grupong nag-iinuman, sa org namin, no? na nandun na sa kanto, mas, uh, mas tago, tapos humihitit sila ng marijuana. No? And this is it's very real no yung uh, inuman may pagka right of passage yan sa uh, sa sa kalalakihan I don't know if it's still that way ngayon mm -hmm. no? and then medyo gateway yeah. uh, yung uh, pag-inom ng beer no um, uh, and then I used to be a student org officer back then no pero hindi ko ano yung itsura noon no yung would if if uh, kung nagkaroon nga ng collaboration with the center ngayon ano yun the student officers would participate in some orientation and then within the student org may pagka uh, i think in the minds of people pag ganyan uminom ka ba o nagda drugs it's more or less may pagka pri personal choice yun na parang ano yung nakita mo pa ano manghihimasok ba yung org officers na huy wag naman no not here wag ano ganyan ganyan o ma, nakita kayo ng lower class men na ano nagiging uh, poor, uh, how 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 would that look like in terms o gaya ni na Mara and Miriam they are students i don't know kung may mga kabarkada nila may ganyan how would that look like at the student org level and student leaders org leaders uh, uh, intervening para ma matamp down yung yung experimentation or you know yung ganun. Thank you very much Dr. Elmer na pa-importante ng tanong mo niyan at bibigyan ko kayo ng Hanggang ngayon guilty pa ako eh. Ah <laughs> oh, sige go ahead. Oh no nag-freeze yata si Prof Grace. So uh, while waiting po for ano for Prof Grace, uh, proceed po tayo kay Miss Sara po muna. Ah, okay, okay. Ayun na si Miss Grace pero um, inang inangkat nam, naririnig niyo ako? Medyo unstable din ang internet ko. Mamu naririnig niyo ako? Apo. Ngayon okay na ba? <laughs> Yan. O, oh, Berkada Contra Droga chapter sa college level. Kasi ang BKD is DepEd ito, at saka LGU, no? Through the DDB, of course. And, kung ano siya, maganda siyang programa kasi through the Barcada Contra Droga. Ang, ang point na kasi is translating negative peer pressure into positive peer pressure. So, instead of pressure mo, katulad ng pinagit ni Doc Elmer na pag-inuman, bakit hindi mo i-influence ang friends mo to do something good, something productive? Like, 
aral na lang tayo, di ba? Or instead na alcohol, ang water ang healthiest drink, di ba? <laughs> Pero totoo yun na mahirap kalaban ng alak kasi una legal siya. Pangalawa part na yan ng kultura natin. Iba socialization kasi, no? Parang um, gusto mo to belong to to a group, tapos inuman sila. So, ang taas talaga ng pressure to conform. So, yung Mercada Contra Drug Program ng College of Education, for a time, naging successful siya. Kaya lang, ang naging problem namin, hindi siya nasustain nung graduate na yung mga leaders nung, nung club. Diba? Yung parang hindi nakapag-build ng susunod. Kaya, uh, inisip namin, pagkatapos ng pandemic, no, kung sakali mang bumalik na yung face-to-face, Isa yun sa mga pinaka-importante talagang components. How do you sustain programs like this? And it's very important because you are building on the power of youth. Diba? Ako nga naniniwala, hindi kayo future ng country. Kasi ayoko nang hintayin yung future. Diba? Gusto kong ngayon na you are our partners for change. Diba? Ngayon na namin kayo kailangan. So, ang ganda nitong initiative ng inyong class through Dr. Soriano kasi napag-uusapan natin itong napakahalagang uh, issue ng bansa. No? Sabi nga, whole of nation approach. If you're going to look at Philippine anti-illegal drug strategy, it's saying it should be balanced. No? Drug demand reductions, drug supply reduction, balance sa tapat yan. Pero ang reality kasi natin ngayon, mas nakapokus tayo sa drug supply reduction. Di ba? Hindi natin masyadong napagtutuunan yung drug demand side, which is equally important. So, ang, ang, ang value ng Barkada Contra Droga is that it's using the power of youth to influence their peers and uh, developing and enhancing life skills. Kasi doon, tuturuan ka, how do you say no? Kasi di ba, meron tayong napaka-popular na slogan, just say no to drugs. But you also need to remember that saying no to drugs is difficult. Di ba? May assumption kasi kaagad na madaling tumanggi. Eh, si Doc, si Doc Elmer nga, di ba, kwento niya, o oh, inuman, di ba? Student leader na siya niyan. Pero ang konteksto kasi, napakahirap tumanggi pag ang kasama mo, mga kaibigan mo. So, how do you how do you address that? You teach our young people how to say no. Di ba? Paano ka tatanggi? Ano ang mga estratehiya para ka tumanggi? At kanina, pinapakinggan ko si Ma'am Sara, 100% ang ano, ang agree ako sa mga binanggit niya, lalo na yung um, discrimination and stigmatizing language. Marami pa rin akong naririnig na mga termino tulad ng addict yan, di ba? So, ngayon, ang, ang ano natin sana, tao yan, di ba? Huwag naman natin silang ano, nawala na silang pag-asa, tao sila. And um, health issue, di ba? So, instead na ikulong natin or patayin, di ba? Saan natin dapat sila ilagay? sa facility kung saan sila pwedeng tulungan. E ba't meron na tayong comprehensive assessment system na imamatch natin ang ating service doon sa need ng taong gumagamit. So, sana, Doc Elmer, na ano no, na share ko sa'yo yung Barkada Contra Droga concept. Ang ganda nito, ha? If you're going to look at the background of the program, it's really very good. Ang ano lang talaga is really the implementation. How are you going to sustain it? Kasi syempre, ang estudyante, gumagraduate. So, pag graduate na, naku, hindi nakapag-train ng mga young batch. So, na namamatay ang program. Pero it's really peer-based, peer-based approach. At ano, napak-importante ng ano, ng approach na yun. Kasi grabe talaga ang power ng youth. Maraming salamat. Um, thank you po, Dr. Grace. Uh, now, let's proceed to Miss Sara po. Ayan. Um, ayun. So, magpa-follow up na lang din ako sa sinabi ni Professor uh, um, Duca Pante. So, actually, I would like to share a story with you. Siguro mga personal stories ko, no? Na, na-mention ko to kay Miriam siya kay Mara. Um, the f- first one is, so I'm actually doing my thesis. Tapos, uh, sabi ko dun sa professor ko na I would like to focus on substance use. Tapos, so I was explaining to him ko ano yung um yung nangyayari sa Pilipinas ganyan tapos sabi niya sa akin um sara i- nagulat lang ako kasi kumbaga parang um so I'm in Germany right now no and then he said na 
nagulat daw siya kasi syempre ang perspective um let's say in the european countries na kapag may drug use problem ka it's a health issue 'di ba sabi niya kumbaga kung meron taong may cancer papatayin mo ba siya yung parang hindi mo ba siya papa hindi mo ba siya tutulungan na gumaling or parang ano kaya ang kailangan nito so 'di ba parang sa Pilipinas I've heard um kumbaga may mga may kamag-anak ako na who used before tapos uh, he was um able to recover pero ang perspective pa rin niya sa mga ta- sa mga people who use drugs sila niya na parang ay nako talagang dapat iano yang mga yan di ba para kumbaga ha ikaw na yan eh nangyari na sa iyo yan di ba so ayun parang kumbaga um sabi nga ni uh, professor Docapante yung mga youth um diba jan yung mga peer pressure ganyan so siguro the first thing is you know not to judge and to maybe be curious parang kumbaga um magtanong ka parang how is it going at home or parang um, okay ka lang ba anong yun lang i eh, just start with that diba just being curious and then of course kumbaga sa with our organization sa ACDP uh, ang ginagawa namin yun nga nag uh, uh, co kami ng mga evidence based research tapos we also work with um uh, universities so um kasama namin diyan yung UP um UST Lasal Ateneo tapos um sa Uh, Mindanao State University and other universities as well. Tapos, syempre, yung mga government partners. Kung baga, tinatry namin na pagsamasamahin lahat and then magtulong-tulungan dito sa um, substance use um, issue. Ayan. So, we have upcoming projects. Kung baga, um, kasama namin, of course, Dr. Elmer is with us. Ayan. Um, ayun po. <laughs> I-elaborate ko ba yung kaya mo yung mga project natin? I mean, um, nag, we had our conference this year. Um, so, sa susunod naming conference, sana nandun din kayo. Kasi it's very, very insightful. Kumbaga, dun din ako natututo na... Um, So we had the speaker uh, with this conference. Ang sinabi niya na wag nating kakalimutan to hear the stories of people who use drugs. Kumbaga hindi, hindi naman din siya pwedeng sabihin na o oh, dapat ganito yung gawin mo, ganyan ganyan. So kailangan maging ano ka din. Pakinggan mo din ano bang kailangan nitong mga to. Ayun po. Ayan. So, thank you so much to those insightful stories from Professor Duca Pante and as well as Ms. Sarda Oros. And of course, to the personal stories that Sir Elmer uh, shared with us. So, ngayon makikita natin, it's really important for us to realize the importance of collaboration. Um, in essence, makikita natin, envisioning our goal for a city that is free from substance abuse is everyone's goal. And we can only do so little when we are alone. Like, sabi nga, kami nga ni, ni Miriam, we really have a hard time um, crafting our vision kasi medyo limited lang yung knowledge namin. But when we were able to interview all of you and our panelists, mas lumawak yung vision namin for Quezon City as a city free of substance abuse. So, Uh, we can do so little when we are alone, but we can really achieve so many things when we work and collaborate with, with each other. So, Professor Duha Pat also mentioned kanina yung you need for sustain, sustainability and implementing but, uh, Barkada Contra Droga. So, um, nagulat kami na meron na pala na programs na, at, uh, na concrete na and i-implement na lang. But then, The challenge sig- siguro points out to whether or not may plan. It's whether or not we are ready to uh, implement it and we are ready at the ground level siguro in our universities, in our organizations to start um, Barcada Contra Drogo. So siguro in the upcoming limited face-to-face classes, um, we can possibly see future developments from this um, and we um, are also open to collaboration with all of you. Um, Ms. Sarah Oroz naman also emphasized on stick destigmatizing the issue and look at um, substance use as a mental and psychological issue. So 
proceed na po tayo sa next question. Uh, in what aspect of these programs um, can the students as well as students' organizations, faculty, and university can contribute? So, in essence, ano po ba yung nakikita niyo substantial role ng universities, ng youth, in achieving these visions na nilaid out po natin kanina? Go ahead po, Professor Ducapante. Um, we all have a role. So this should really be a whole of nation approach. So for the for the youth, sabi ko nga kanina, diba, you are our partners for change. And begin with yourself. Be a good example. Good role model. Kasi paano mo influence ng ibang tao kung ikaw mismo, diba, ay gumagamit. So li live a healthy life and be a positive influence to your peers. Also, you, you need to be an upstander. Meaning, pag may nakita kang mali, no? maging, maging hindi lang critical, eh. maging action-oriented ka, hindi pa din nabubulag-bulagan tayo. Diba sa UP, tinuturo sa atin, honor and excellence. Nauuna yung honor. Diba? So, uh, have that strong sense of values. No, umpisa talaga sa sarili ito. Kasi wala naman tayong pwedeng baguhin hindi ang ating mga sarili. Di ba? Hindi natin pwedeng ibaguhin ang ibang tao. So, umpisa sa sarili. And then, you also, we also need to remember na multifactorial kasi ang substance use. Di ba? May mga lumalabas ng literature ngayon na it is genetically linked. About 40 to 60 percent genetically linked. So, that is something that we cannot control. But, the, we can do something about the environment. Di ba? Kasi ang, ang ideology ng substance use tao, no? may mga predispositions ka, kung yun nga, kung nasa genes mo siya or yung personality traits mo, ikaw yung tipo ng tao na mahilig kang mag-take ng risk, no? na hindi mo muna kinakalculate, di ba? Gusto, gusto mo yung feeling na, ayun, ginawa akong ganito, YOLO, di ba? You only live once. So, gawin na natin lahat to. <laughs> di ba? May ganyan na yun. So, tumataas ang risk mo pa may ganun. And then, nag interact ang personal characteristics, you interact with your environment, your micro and macro level environments. So, sa micro level, of course, yung family. And, tandaan natin, kahit sa ang kultura, ang pamilya ang pinakamahalagang protective factor. So, if you have a loving family, ang parenting skills ng parents mo talagang well-developed and pinalaki ka ng mabuti. No, wala ka lang hanapin sa labas kasi busog ka sa pagmamahal. That is the most important protective factor. So we really need to focus on our families, building our families, making them healthy. And, and ano, no, parang ang environment sa family ito ang very warm and supportive. And then next to that is the school. Kaya nga, di ba, yun, sa UP, napakaganda nito mga ganitong opportunities for for exchange, diba? for learning from one another. And then, because we have the workplace, no? Um, Magami itong settings na to. And then the community as a whole. And don't forget the role of media also. Kasi ang media napaka-powerful. Kaya lang pag nalilihis ang media, ah, lalo na ngayon, diba? with social media, medyo toxic siya. So, maging critical lang tayo kasi hindi lahat ng nakikita na mabasa natin ay totoo. So, going back to that, um, yung critical, diba? critical mindedness and um, weighing things, diba? uh, looking at the different perspectives, bago mo tanggapin ang isang issue, tingnan mo muna talaga siya sa iba't ibang klase ng perspektibo. At, um, think ko mahalaga din na uh, coming together, no, yung, yung, yung youth, sabi ko nga, be a good role model. And of course, yung adults, lalo na, <laughs> napakataas ng ano, expectations sa atin. And remember, ang, ang young people, ang sinasabi niya, si, si, si Doc Elmer, uh, piningnan mo yung, ano, yung brain ng teen, diba? ito siya sa adult. At kailangan niya ng guidance pagdating sa decision making. Kasi ang prefrontal cortex ninyo, hindi pa fully developed. And that's the seat of judgment and decision making. So the role really of uh, adults like me is to guide you, ba, on how to make wise decisions. And ang faith, ba, yung church, lalo na sa context ng Philippines, faith-based organizations. Ito mga, uh, kasi sa ibang countries, for example, sa Brunei, ang strong ng kanilang Islamic community no, pagdating sa preventive drug education, napapasok sa Islamic um, subject nila, parang sila sa curriculum, no? 
nakapasok doon ang prevention. In other countries, same. No, ginagamit nila ang kanilang mga religious activities para sa pag-send ng prevention message. And I think ng Philippines, marami tayong mga faith-based organizations na ganyan ang ginagawa. Ang nagkikita ko lang dito really is issue ng coordination. Hindi natin nakikita. Ang dami efforts sa ground. Pero hindi natin kasi nakikita yung collaborate ng mga ito, parang hiwa-hiwalay siya. Yun nga sinasabi ko yung fragmented siya. No? Na, okay, ang, ang, ang ganitong uh, ang adak may ginagawang ganito, di ba? Ang faithless may ginagawang ganito, pero hindi natin nakikita yung pabuuan. At tandaan din natin na prevention can be harmful if not done correctly and scientific. Alam natin yan, di ba? Good intentions are not enough. We need to do it the right way. Kasi puro, lahat naman tayo gusto nating makatulong, di ba, ng mga solusyon ng itong problema ng ito. Pero kung mali ang pamamaraan natin, baka mas maging damaging pa siya. No? Uh, yung mga polisiya natin ngayon na uh, punishment-based, di ba, penalty-based, pag ikaw na huling, um, uh, di ba, gumagamit, anong gagawin sa'yo ng school? Expansion, di ba? punishment based instead na dapat supportive yan. 'Di ba? Pag nahuli ka, ibig sabihin ka sa call for for help. Hindi may problema ka sa so kailangan kang tulungan. Hindi yung tatanggalin ka. Eh, saan ka napupunta ngayon? Di, walang support. Di lalo ka mapapasama. 'Di ba? Hindi natin sila na save So baka kailangan talaga nating baguhin 'no, yung yung kultura sa ngayon kung gusto nating ma-achieve yung Quezon City drug free by 2050. Ang daming ang daming mga bagay na kailangan talaga nating baguhin. No? Uh, pananaw, yung stigmatizing language, napumpisahan talaga natin ba na baguhin yan. And yung mag-usap-usap, kasi hindi naman ito contest, di ba, na, ay, pagpalinan uh, tayo, ay, uh, kami ganito, ang ganda-ganda ng pagkakas. Hindi siya contest. We need to come together because we have the same vision. No? Not only for Kansas City, but for the Philippines as a whole. So, yun lang. No? Lahat tayo dapat magtulungan lahat ng sektor. Dami, lahat ng stakeholders, educators like me. No? Ang preventive drug education, napaka-powerful niya. So, ang, ang pinupush ng center ngayon is really evidence-based prevention. Kasi nga may international standards na tayo. So, just understand it and try to implement it on the ground. Kasi ito yung mga proven na, na nag-work. Kaso sa Pilipinas, di ba, puro, ay, best practice naman kasi ito. Bakit pa natin kailangang baguhin? Ginawa na natin ito ng, di ba, mga mga kanununuan natin ito na ginawa. Ay, nga, na palitan. Hindi tayo future-oriented, di ba? Kaya ang, gawa, ang ganda nitong ano, future slab ninyo eh. Kasi, pag in-innovation natin, going back, di ba? Work backwards. How are we going to attain that in 2050? 2021 ngayon. Paano natin yan? Anong gagawin natin sa ngayon para ma-attain natin yung vision na yan? So, um, yun lang. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you po, uh, Prof. Grace. Uh, yes, Sir Elmer. Yes, may tanong kay Prof. Grace. No? So, itong class na to sa public ad no and then kasi sa sa campus may kanya-kanyang discipline may psychology yes. may education kaya siguro yung center nandiyan sa uh, eduk dahil <laughs> educational yung perspective no pero may psychology yes. perspective rin public ad naman ito yung mga pangbarangay SK si public ad students pero within UP Diliman how paano kaya pwedeng pagtulungan ng College of Eduk at saka NC Pag itong kasi transdisciplinal rin to eh no hindi naman yes. pwedeng ano eh no? and then in a way yung public ad yung gateway to government eh no uh, uh, kasi public administration yung ano paano kaya pwedeng pagtulungan ng NC Pag at saka uh, Eduk College of Eduk ito para yun no yung yung magkaroon ng synergies Doc Elmer, ang ganda ng tanong mo, no baka nga pwedeng umpisahan natin parang tayo ang magbe-bridge, no? Because you are correct, no? Ang dami nating disciplines na ang ganda ding makapag-collaborate, no, sa ating mga kasamahan sa UP. I'm sure ang psychology for example, marami din silang efforts na related sa substance use prevention. Hindi lang tayo aware. Actually, 
buti nga in-invite ninyo ako eh kasi hindi ko alam. Hindi ko alam itong effort na to. So, nung binasa ko itong uh, Futures Lab, um, sobra ako na excited. Sabi ko, may ganito pa lang, may ganito pa lang uh, initiative ang UP. At ang ganda kasi in collaboration with the LGU, dapat marami kang efforts na ganito. And, and I agree na sa UP mismo, uh, Doc Elmer, napunta marami tayong antap potential and top resources. Kailangan lang natin hanapin. So baka umpisa natin sa inventory. What are the the programs in UP Diliman? Anong mga services? Anong mga offices meron tayo sa loob na pwedeng pagsamasamahin para nag-aintindihan tayo nag kumbaga sa iba, power in numbers. Yun. Agree ako diyan, 100% ang support ko diyan. Sige, gawin natin 'yan. <laughs> Back to you, Mara and Miriam. Um, so, ayan, thank you po, Sir Elmer and Prof. Grace. Uh, um, we would like to hear po from ano, Miss Sarah. Ayan. So, um, sa youth, no, actually, uh, just to give you a perspective, siguro kung gaano kahirap talaga kasi sabi nga ni Professor Grace na it's not as easy as you think na parang hindi. Kung baga, If you tell yourself, okay, siguro one month ako hindi ako kain ng junk food, di ba? Ang hirap. Ako hirap na hirap ako. O kaya sweets, ganun lang. E imagine kung dependent ka na, di ba? So, there are like, ganun, I mean, ang napaka-complex um, talaga ng substance use kasi um, yun, biological siya, psychological, tsaka sociological. Pero uh, maybe what we have to keep in mind is not everyone is as lucky as us. ba diba? Na parang tipong, pwede tayong, ay, sila nagmamariwana sila dun sa grid. Ako okay lang ako, ganyan. Pero what if, kunwari, sa, sa bahay, ba diba, no? Kung baga merong uh, domestic abuse o kaya hindi ka pinapansin ng mga magulang mo, I mean, it's very easy to judge na parang, ay, tignan mo siya ganyan. Pero kung aalamin mo kung bakit, siguro, dun mo maiintindihan. Um, so, ito, itutuloy ko yung kwento ko. I was in Vienna and actually, I, um, a friend of mine works there sa homeless shelter. So, we were just talking about, parang sabi ko, kamusta ang nagilagawa sa homeless shelter? So, ano siya, therapist siya. Ang sabi niya ay sabi ko sabi niya na parang ayun nagaano ko nag um, uh, um, he's doing therapy for homeless people. Sabi ko ay yung mga homeless people dito um, ano yung factors ko bakit sila usually um, wala walang bahay. I mean hello it's a developed country, right? Tapos sabi niya sabi ko na ano ba to sa um, do they have substance issues or something, sabi niya, ay oo, tsaka um, usually siguro nawala ng trabaho, ganyan, or napalayas ng ano, asawa sa bahay, yung mga ganyan, di ba? Parang it's very real. And then I was asking him, ano yung mga measures na ginagawa? So basically, um, they get psychological help, they get help from the government, kung kailangan, may, they, they have shelters. So isipin mo, if you're going through something as hard as divorce or nawalan ka ng trabaho, tapos aaminin mo sarili mo na ako, parang ilang araw na akong nasa, ano, ah, nasa kalye, parang siguro kailangan ko na ng tulong. Mahirap yun, ha? So that's the hardest part. Pero when help is available, it's already there. Diba? Aaminin mo na lang sa sarili mo. Kunwari, ako aaminin ko na parang, uy, medyo ano, napapadalas na yung kain ko ng sweet or something like that. Yun lang, diba? Something as that. So, I was thinking na nalungkot ako kasi sabi ko parang, bakit sa Pilipinas hindi tayo ganun? Yung parang tipong, um, the people who really need it the most, they don't get um, the help that they need. Diba? Ayun. So, um, what the youth can do is, of course, like, but dahil nasa university kayo, you can also look into it, kung baga ano pa bang kailangan. Pero madami na din namang um, resources na available. Tapos siguro, ask your friends or the people around you how they're doing. Ganyan. Uh, ba diba ang ganda ng ang mental health issue? I remember, nasa Pilipinas pa ako, sobrang stigmatized ya. Diba? Na parang, ay hindi, ano, uh, kausapin, yung kausapin mo lang yung magulang mo, kaya andito ako, tawag ka lang. Ganyan. Pero iba pala siya. ba? Diba? I also had that perspective before. So sana parang sa substance use, ganun din. Na parang, you have to be careful. Ngayon, if somebody says that they're depressed, it's not as if na, 
ayan na, inom lang tayo or something like that. Or parang ano, mag-party-party tayo. Hindi na ganun, di ba? Parang, ah, okay, you know what? Maybe if you need help, like, I'm just here. O kaya, I can connect you to somebody who is a professional. Ayun. So, that's it. Thank you po, Miss Sarah. Uh, so, ko lang um, parang i-manifest, ano, na uh, yung, uh, gaya nga sabi ng mga panelists natin, parang, Uh, yung uh, yung good and positive environment can be a big factor in helping us uh, resolve the issue especially dahil nga uh, syem- uh, multi-sectoral nga ito um, uh, and uh, hindi naman pwedeng masolve nga lang ano by uh, by focusing lang sa mga oh, ito gumagamit so parang okay uh, parang uh, ano ba parang ito um, ikaw gumagamit ka tapos parang andun yung parang stigma na Uh, uh, parang uh, for the lack of a better term uh, salot ka sa lipunan ganun. and um, another important thing is yung ano nga yung pag-highlight na pag-highlight sa pagiging punish, punishment based approach natin na alam natin uh, hindi ganun ka-effective given nga nung, ano, nung uh, like itong uh, mga yung previous na parang version ng Uh, government natin when it comes to um, eradicating yung mga um, illegal illegal drug users no na yung sa previous version ng uh, plantokhang then ayun na uh, mention din yung collaboration of uh, various disciplines especially here sa ano sa UP Diliman um, and I would like to uh, parang manifest lang na um, maybe ano Gagaya po ng ano, i-share ko lang yung ginagawa namin sa NSTP namin na since uh, dahil nga um, hindi ganoon um, unlike dati na kailangan uh, pupunta kayong community para mag-conduct ng ano NSTP to yun, yung CWATS. Ngayon parang since ka-pandemic nga um uh, nakikipag-collaborate po yung uh, NCPAG with ano HRVVMC para uh, tumulong na mag uh, ano ba yun, mag index ng cases ng mga ganun ng mga martial law victims. So, maybe uh, parang pwede nating uh, gawin po 'yun dito sa Futures Lab. So, 'yun lang. So, Mara. Ayan. So, thank you so much again to our panelists. Now, we would like to hear again from Miss Crystal Buen if um, okay na po yung connection nila. Um, na mention po kasi kanina ni um, Professor Elmer na um, may possible na pag-create of um, uni- university-based researches coming from various disciplines gaya nga ng psychology, behavioral science, um, especially in College of Education and NCPAG na um, magkakaroon po ng way to put to, into good use yung mga researches namin and um, transform those researches uh, na hindi lang po sila magsistay in paper but put into practice. So, we want to hear from Ms. Crystal Buen, ano po ba yung mga needed institutional arrangements na kinakailangan namin gawin for us to formalize this collaboration and um, is CADAC open po ba for this collaboration? Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry talaga sa connection, ano, moving po kasi kami. Anyway, yun nga ma'am, we're very happy and we're very lucky that uh, yung uh, po, future love, ang napili ay ang Quezon City Cada. So, we're be, uh, ang Quezon City Adak po. We really need the help of the uh, uh, education sexu- sector. Like po dun sa ano namin, ano, like uh, what we're doing right now yung sa aftercare program, yung reintegration program namin. Meron kami actually uh, uh, school na uh, tinatap ngayon yung um, psychology department na Um, diba, Fatima po. Sila po yung nagbibigay ng psychosocial na lecture sa mga uh, P-Woods natin under dun sa um, aftercare program. O, so, nagkakandak din po sila ng mga lecture. Saka, yung kasi po kasi before, meron po, bago po, po after nung counseling programs, uh, bago sila pumasok dun sa aftercare program namin, meron po kami tinatawag na yung training needs assessment So, yung iba naman kasi doon, meron na talagang trabaho. Yung iba naman for like livelihood. Mga gusto nila livelihood. Pero yung iba naman doon, uh, 
like for example, gusto nilang mag, uh, magtrabaho din in the future. Ang ginawa namin, uh, nag-request din kami kung paano silang gumawa ng resume. Mga simple simple na mga training lang naman ang kailangan nila doon. Then yung paano yung good grooming, basic kasi yun eh, na dapat natuturo din natin doon sa mga P-Woods natin para eventually ma-reintegrate natin sila sa community. So, kasi syempre, katulad nga yan, dahil dala ng kahirapan, usually na sinasabi ng mga P-Woods na, kailangan, na kaya sila nagbebenta or ano. So, kung mabigyan natin sila ng magandang uh, pagkabuhayan, di, hindi na sila doon, hindi na sila magbebenta. Diba? Kasi karamihan po nung mga uh, surrenders natin during the 2016, karamihan sila rin yung ating mga plea bargainers right now. So yung yun yung nakikita kong problem na, uh, na na ng city kami kasi paulit-ulit binigyan na namin sila ng counseling ng mga previous previous years pero nagugulat kami sila pa rin yung plea bargainers natin. So it's a waste of money and time kung sila yung yung hindi natin talaga na-address yung ano ba talagang nagiging problema bakit bakit sila ipabalik-balik sa paggamit ng Uh, ng mga mga illegal na droga. So yun nga, maganda rin po talaga. Tsaka po yung uh, preventive education, naniniwala po ako na yung tamang kaalaman, yung pagbibigay ng uh, tamang kaalaman, uh, eh doon magsisimula ano, sa mga kabataan natin. So talagang ano kami sa, sa KADAC, no, talagang gusto namin maitap yung mga schools, nangihingi kami talaga sa kanila ng Uh, sa webinar kahit 2 hours uh, na mag na mag-attend yung mga kabataan ng webinars even the parents ini-involve na rin namin kasi dapat sa bahay alam nila na may sa kung may something na kung may kakaiba sa mga anak nila although ngayon kasama nila yung mga anak nila sa bahay na, na monitor nila eh pero yung pag mag face to face na naman tayo nandiyan na naman yan Although hindi lumiit ang ang uh, ang crime uh, ang uh, drugs ang cases drug cases po actual according dun sa mga police eh hindi siya bumaba during this pandemic. Dahil yung ano pagbebenta ginamit naman yung ano uh, tawag dito yung mga Medyo nawala na naman si ma'am. Yung mga lalabo, mga grab, talagang tumaas during the pandemic. Kaya kami, talagang massive na naman yung campaign na namin sila na magka- Ayan, so... Um, Miriam and I are really hopeful for this collaboration po, no, with CADAC and as well as the policy organizations uh, as we represented nga, um, Professor Duhapant and Ms. Sarah Oros. So, um, ayun. Miriam, let's move on siguro dun sa ways forward. Paano ba natin palalakasin yung collaboration na to with these different policy um, organizations and as well as CADAC? Now na so very strong yung call for adaptive measures dahil nga, dah, dahil nga sabi ni Ms. Gwen, kahit pandemic, nag evolve din yung form of transactions ngayon on substance abuse. So, we really need to catch up na um, instead of being reactionary, kailangan natin maging action-oriented and proactive with our plans and programs. So, um, Miriam, let's proceed siguro. So, ayun nga, no. Uh, nabanggit nga yung, ano ba yun, yung uh, collaboration ng various uh, disciplines dito sa university. Parang in terms of, ano naman, in terms of, ano po, uh, Uh, strengthening yung university to university collaborations. Uh, ano yung, paano po yung magiging role or how important do you think uh, yung role ng uh, uh, pagkakaroon ng evidence-based research in this uh, in policy making? Sige, ako na muna, i-cue ko na lang muna si Sarah. So, earlier this week, 
kasama ko si Sara sa meet, meeting with the department chair of Ateneo de Manila Psych Department, si Professor uh, Lian Alampay. Tapos doon ko na lang nalaman na 1,000 uh, psychology undergrads pala sila. Tapos may 200 masteral students sa psychology pa lang yun. No? Parang doon ko na-realize, wow, ang lalim nun. That's so much brain power na parang kailangan na lang, di ba, parang paano na lang natin yun i-harness. Eh, kita mo nga, itong klase lang natin, 25 lang tayo. Parang oh, ito, medyo may some tayong nagagawa. Paano pa kaya kung 1,000, a department of 1,000 psychology majors. No? So baka iba to ko kay Sarah. No? Ito yung ito yung tinatrabaho namin ni Sara. Ano yung nakita mo ngayon na ito, no, yung kausapan natin ng Lasal, ang UP Manila, psychiatry, psychology. Um, Sara, ano yung nakita mong ways forward? Ayan. Um, actually, um, kasi ang research sa Pilipinas, I think, is not centralized or kumbaga... Um, kanya-kanya yung ginagawa ng mga universities eh. Whereas, um, dito sa Germany, ang research, it happens in the university, pero may mga centers talaga that does this with other universities. So, ang ganda kasi, kumbaga, um, siguro that is something that we can do in the Philippines. Kasi, number one, yung resources, nasa-save yung resources. Kasi, kumbaga, yung nagawa na ng UP, Um, di na kailangan gawin ng lasal. Siguro kaila, pwede niyang i-elevate or pwede niyang um, kumbaga mag-explore pa dun sa part na yon So, ayun. Kumbaga, parang this is going back also to the fragmented efforts, di ba? So, sana, kumbaga, mas maging open ang mga university, which is, they actually are. They are very open to that. And we just need um, kumbaga, like ACDP na i- Um, co-connect them together. And you know what? Parang, uy, interesado tong university na to. And then, maybe they can, maybe maybe you guys can work together. ba? Diba? So, baga, kumbaga, ayun. Ayun, Doc Elmer. <laughs> Back to you, Mara. Ayan. So, again, thank you again to our um, panelists na Uh, nakapag-share po sa atin ng mga valuable insights when it comes to prevention and education and as well as changing the mindsets of our communities towards uh, building um, not only Quezon City as a city of free of substance abuse but also to form collaborations with other cities and eventually use a whole of nation approach uh, para po sa buong country natin. So, uh, once again, um, We would like to continue our discussion, pero this time um, on the balcony naman. So in our PA 152 class, po, so we have the so-called um, looking, uh, moving out, moving to the balcony and looking at what we have accomplished so far. So uh, a very uh, quick run through lang po ng mga na, na achieved natin in the in the past minutes of our session. Siguro number one important yung na lay down po natin yung mga visions natin for Quezon City 20. 50, as well as creating frameworks for collaborations na mention nga kanina yung Barkada Contra Droga and as well as um, um, having a centralized researches na para hindi na pa ulit-ulit yung mga researches na ginagawa ng mga students and as well as focusing our efforts para magkaroon ng research-based policies. So with all the discussion points na na-raise in our uh, roundtable discussion, I think we can invite our audience, one of our audience, to place their questions, insights, and reactions or comments sa nangyaring discussion natin kanina. Uh, feel free to use the raise hand function or type your questions using that chat box. So, um, we'll, we'll invite you your, some of our audiences. Ayan. So, while waiting for their questions, mauna na po siguro ako kasi very curious po ako sa um, opinion nyo po when it comes to community-led um, drug uh, or substance abuse initiatives. Kasi recently po na-encounter po namin in our class yung um, gawad 
ay galing po ok awards um we're in na awarden po yung general santos city with their likay droga program or yung community based uh, initiative so um nakakapani bago na mahakita ng community na hindi lang umasa dun sa top down approach or yung mga um policies na binababa from the national so from their own um gas grassroots level nag nagkaroon po sila ng collaboration with um DSWD um Dole um the, the Dangerous Drugs Board and and as well as Pidea so um what is your opinion po on this um coming from an organizationalist perspective ano po kaya yung um positive impacts ng pagkakaroon ng community led substance abuse preventive programs Um, Professor Duha Pante, you can start po. Thank you, Mara. So, in my opinion, that's the best way to go, community-based, no? Talagang, kasi sila ang nakakaramdam sa ground, sila ang nakakaintindi kung ano ang pangangailangan ng komunidad. At sila din ang merong malawak na perspective kung ano yung mga internal and external resources na meron sila. So I guess um, kailangan lang talaga natin i-empower yung ating mga communities. In other countries, they're using that to village um, drug-free villages ang tawag nila. Um, common yan, common yan. And even in the international standards, that's one of the, the very important settings in prevention. Siguro sa atin lang, kailangan lang palakasin talaga yung um, policy implementation kasi ang ganda-ganda ng mga batas natin, ang, ang dami natin magagandang batas pero hindi lang natin talaga na implement ng maayos. Like yung Anti-Drug Abuse Council, mula sa barangay level yan, late 1990s, napakalinaw na na may polisiya tayo tungkol sa anti uh, adapts no anti drug abuse councils pero aminado din even the, the dangerous drugs board na marami tayong anti drug abuse councils na hindi functional no so isipin niyo kung ang buong Pilipinas lahat ng barangay natin may functional na anti drug abuse council hindi lang ang Quezon City by the way congratulations sa QC kasi na award kayo pero na imagine niyo kung gaano kaganda sana yung ating uh, initiatives sa, sa drug prevention kung lahat, bawat barangay sa Pilipinas ay may functioning anti-drug abuse council. So, I guess yun yung, ano, yun yung perspective na gusto ko sa inyong share. Naniniwala ako na mahalagang approach ang community-based for prevention of substance use. From Ms. Sarah naman po. Well, I couldn't agree more, actually. Um, siguro, um, think about it this way, na um, let's say somebody you don't know will tell you something. Kung baga sabi atin, hindi ka magaling sa math, ganyan. Pero if it comes from somebody who knows you, na parang alam mo, hindi ka masyadong magaling sa math, di ba? parang maniniwala ka na, oo nga, no, ganyan. Pero, so, in terms of community, diba, with the people you know who tells you these things, mas maniniwala ka and mas, mas, mas kilala ka kasi nila. So, I think also it's the best way to go. Um, the community can achieve a lot of things. Kunwari, may piesta lang, diba? Pwedeng oh, mag-perform tayo, ganyan. So, um, if you put those efforts, let's say with um, substance use, okay, parang sa sa youth lang na mag-usap-usap sila, ganyan. And then, um, siguro start small. Kumbaga, um, on the other hand, ang ganda na mga community, on the other hand, yun nga, sana i-empower sila. Kasi, if you do things on your own, parang siguro medyo frustrated ka na, na parang, um, ay, naku, wala talagang gumagawa nito, so tayo-tayo na lang. Ayun. Pero, pero there's good that comes out of that. So, yeah, it's very important. Yun lang, na parang tipong, um, um, kasi these are the people that you know and the place that you grew up with. So, um, yung intimacy mo with them or the person who used drugs, um, kumbaga, mas magiging effective siya. Whereas somebody who doesn't know you that well tells you what you, you, you should do or what you are doing. Diba? It doesn't really convince anyone. Ayun. Yes, sir. Go ahead po. 
It, so last week, ang kausap naman namin from Quezon City. So last week, meron rin kami yung Quezon City Futures Lab discussion, pero leadership development naman. Ang kasama namin doon uh, ay uh, yung QC Youth Development Office. Yun yung in charge ng lahat ng SKM ng Youth Development Program. Tapos ang isang initiative na napagkasunduan namin na next step, I to uh, attempt to design a youth development program for QC senior high schools. No? Uh, yung leadership na yun, non-specific. No? Pero uh, I can imagine na pwedeng may track doon na itong ano, uh, barkada kontra droga as a leadership project. Uh, so question to kay Professor uh, Grace. No? Anong, anong palagay mo doon sa potential of working with DepEd senior high schools? And then it is both a youth leadership program and a drug demand reduction initiative. Parang two in one, di ba? Yeah. Yung leadership mo is in drug demand reduction among your peers and tuturoan ka namin, mga senior high schools. Uh, sa, 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 ah, yun, no? Ano yung palagay mo doon sa, ano, sa past... Uh, possible initiative na yun. Doc Elmer, napakalaki ng ano, ng potential ng program na yan. So, parang pinagsasama mo yung leadership and at the same time, yung existing. Kasi existing program na yan eh. So, at least mas strengthen siya. Ang siguro tingin ko lang is hinawin lang yung guidelines and structure, yung mechanism and how to implement it. Kasi kuminsan yung framing, di ba, nag-matter talaga. Parang uh, hindi mo i-reinvent ang wheel. Importante yung message yun. Kasi pag ang tao, di ba, pag sinabi mo, may bago ka na namang gagawin, may bago na naman namang programang ipapagawa sa'yo. Ano agad, di ba? Parang, oh, sandali, tami-tami ko na nga ginagawa. Yung additional na naman. Kasi ganyan, di ba, for example, when you're going to deal with bad people, no? Yung pag-frame na, sandali, hindi ito bagong program. Existing na ito, ginagawa nyo na ito. I-refine lang natin para umangat yung leadership component. Diba, peer leaders kasi yan eh. So, influencing your peers to be drug-free and to be healthy. So, ganda. Ganda ng programa. Sana magpaterialize, Doc Elmer, yung collaboration na yan. Ngayon, paano natin matap yung eduk uh, students? Eh, so, ito, public ad students, undergrad. Uh, meron ka bang, nagtuturo ka ba at may undergrad uh, eduk students ka bang pwedeng i-align around uh, this? Ay, um, Doc, uh, four classes ako every sem, undergrad, usually undergrad. So, kung, kasi alanganin na nga yung sem, no? Oo, oh, patapos na eh. <laughs> patapos na ang oh. sem, pero baka pwede, oo, yung mga susunod na sem. So, pagplanong ka natin. Oo, oh, sige. Hello, ma'am. Uh, Yes, ma'am. Ma'am Grace. Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am ma Grace. Um, I do agree with you, no? Marami tayong magagandang pali. No, wala pa rin. Talaga. Kaya lang talaga, yung ma LGU. So, kung kami kung magbabag, and also the barangay. Kasi sa amin po babagsak. Kaya dahil kung evidence-based talaga, sa amin ang gagaling ang data. Wala yata ako na naman. Yan na rin ni ka na namin. Yan po, po, sir. Uh, so, ang akin po, uh, yung mga policy, kasi kami ang, ano eh, kami kumbaga yung pinaka, kumbaga executive eh, kumbaga kami yung mag-execute ng mga policies na binababas sa ano eh, especially yung LGU lagi Doc Elmer, um, pwede ba akong magdagdag habang hinihintay natin yes, ang sure. global yeah, yan, si Ma'am Cristela. Uh, gawin, gawin nyo to, gawin nyo to, gawin nyo to. Talagang mahirap sa part ng LGU na um, ma ma umaga yung burden na sa amin lahat eh. Tapos siyempre yung bago naman kami makakuha ng mga data yan, siyempre bababa naman namin sa barangay. Sa barangay yan. Kasi... Yes po. Opo. So, ibababa na naman namin sa barangay yan. So, yung barangay, pag nakarinig na naman
Yes, Prof. Grace. May isang sabi ka. Ayan, si... Medyo ano pa na itong policy na to, di ba? Totoo naman, right now talagang sayo ng mga policies. Tapos may hindi na nagiging priority yon Ang nagiging pri- health-related issue siya, pero yung priority siya, ganun po, tapos vaccination. So yung, yes ma'am? Ako? Hello ma'am, narinig ko ako. Yes, yes ma'am Cristela, narinig ka namin. Opo. Opo. So, so sana yun nga yung since ito eh, uh, i-review na lang siguro natin yung mga policies na meron na tayo. Yun yung pinaka-the best na gagawin natin. Kaysa sa magbibigay na naman tayo ng ibang policy, siguro yung policy na, na magagawa natin, based on our experience na for the past ilan, ano na pa to, magsi six, year, six years na tong implementation itong uh, since nung nag, ano nga, no, nag-massive campaign yung TOKHA, ganun. So talagang mas maigi, siguro pag planuhan natin, maigi, no. Uh, kami, we have the data. Kami naman, sa, alam naman namin lahat Uh, uh, wa- manggagaling sa amin yung mga lahat ng mga surveys and ano ninyo kasi kami yung nasa baba kami yung nakaka-communicate sa mga barangay ganun so ka- kasi kami meron din kami ilan yung graduates namin ng community base tapos kami uh, since report repository kami ng mga data. Pinagagawa ko din sa mga, hello, yung mga 2016 na surrenderies natin, nasaan na ba yung mga surrenderies natin ngayon? Napakagandang, doon tayo magsimula eh, na, uh, na tignan natin maigi yung, yung ginawa natin mga policy nung time na yan, kung naging effective ba o hindi. Diba po? Totoo mo yung, yung mga bada kami yung although merong sinasa kung um, hindi naman parang yung ibang barangay talaga active pero marami talagang barangay hindi active okay sige Prof. Grace may isang sabi ka <laughs> Ayun yung agree ako doon sa mga sinabi ni Ma'am Cristela regarding sa ano no yung ginagawa nila sa sa ADAC and babalikan ko lang yung perkanta kontra droga uh, Dr. Elmer kasi napakasabi ko nga very promising no yung collaboration na yon sana mag, 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 mag materialize talaga siya pero sana sabayan din ng research component kasi sa ngayon, ang international standards ng UNODC and WHO, wala pa silang evidence na itong mga peer-based programs ay effective. So, kailangan nilang mag-ipong ng evidensya na at ang dami nito sa atin, di ba, ang Philippines, marami tayong mga peer-based programs eh. So, um, college really is to come up with an evidence that it works in our context. So, sana may kaakibat na research component ang barkada kontra droga na kinoconceptualize ngayon with the Quezon City ano youth development uh, ano yun uh, doc yung sa yung kausap mo youth last youth development time. office youth development office oh. Oh. ganda ng programa niya sana maging exemplar siya maging model siya for the for the country kung paano ipwedeng ipasok sa senior high school Kasi parang currently ang BKD ay nasa junior high kung hindi ako nagkakamali. Pero siyang isang club no na open sa mga uh, high school students pero ang focus niya is junior high. Itong sa inyo kasi, ang difference niya is that leadership, very strong leadership component and you are going to focus on senior high school students. So napaka-interesting kung magkaroon talaga siya ng research no kung gaano siya oo yung kanyang implementation on the ground baka pwedeng i-share sa DepEd para maging model. Yeah. Nung kausap naman namin yung Ateneo earlier this week ano research collaboration ren yung pinapag-usapan no. So open sila yung uh, Department of Psychology to partner up on uh, joint research. And uh, Last na lang ito, Dr. Elmer, sa part po, no? Yung, I guess, is also very important to look into capacitating our LGUs and other stakeholders on monitoring and evaluation. 
Kasi ang dami natin yung mga programs na implement lang kayo ng implement pero hindi natin alam kung worth it ba. Hindi natin minimeasure ang ano, effectiveness. Baka nagsasayang lang tayo ng panahon, ng resources. Yes, ma'am. So, Agree, ma'am kami. Yeah, mm. Oo, kailangan very strong ang MND in place. Kasi yan din ang backbone ng evidence-based practice. Should be able to really come up with evidence no, that your your program is working. And how do you do that? Of course, Ito kailangan eh. okay yung ano, monitoring and evaluation of the program. Thank you. Thank you. Ayan. So, thank you once again to our panelists. Ngayon, very complete na yung framework natin for collaboration. And we have observed na uh, everyone is uh, cooperative naman and collaborative in this effort. Kaya nga na sinabi ni uh, Professor Duca Pante, we can utilize yung Barkada Contra Droga and as well as form partnerships. Ngayon, yung, yung na-visualize natin, hindi lang limited to uh, Quezon City or, or to Kadak. Kasi involved na rin yung leadership sector natin. Involving naman Quezon City Youth Development Office. Uh, yes, uh, so, ma'am. I just, I just want to ano, mention yun. Ano. Actually, kung yung, yung sa uh, yung SDEC na sinasabi nila, yung uh, Special Education Center, no? meron tayong regulations ng BDB na dapat ang mga LGUs meron ding SDEC. Kung ma-execute ng maganda yon, malaking bagay po yun maitutulong sa drug prevention education. Sobrang ganda po noon. Kaya lang, ang pangit lang dun sa regulation meron may stigma na, na special drug education. Ang nangyayari, pagka narinig ng mga kabataan yung drug, ay, ito ako pupunta dyan, di naman ako adik. So, mahirap mag-invite ng gano'n. So, siguro, i-rephrase natin na hindi na siya special uh, anti-drug education center. Siguro yung DDB mismo, magkawa rin si Sa policy natin, ma'am, di ba policy making na rin naman tayo na baguhin yung pangalan na yun. Kasi yung mga kabataan, hindi ni namin ma-invite na pumunta doon. Dahil nga, ang nasa isip nila eh, hindi sila adik. Pag, tina, pag kami mga programs kami, hindi naman kami adik, ba't kami pupunta dyan? So, hindi siya enticing. Hindi tayo makaka-invite ng mga uh, ng mga, kahit yung mga out of... Kasi ang purpose niya is for out of school youth and for uh, children na mga nasa... Yung mga nare-rescue. Yung mga uh, nasa kalansangan ng mga kabata. So, yun lang din, ma'am, yung aking maisasabi. Sana baka makatulong din yun sa, ano, natin, sa research natin. Thank you po. Ayan. So, makita natin very uh, advanced or uh, futures thinking talaga agad. Kasi ayan, meron na tayong policy agad na baguhin yung preventive education to invite more um, youth to collaborate with us. So, in the interest of time, unfortunately, we cannot uh, push through with the other parts of our discussion. We can siguro continue the discussion on on different um, avenues naman like our uh, document or planning document po. We are hopeful now we can still collaborate with CADAC, with uh, the respective organizations of Professor Duca Pante and Ms. Sarah Oros. So, um, to formally present you our um, appreciation, we would like to uh, proceed with the awarding of our e-certificates. So, as a sign of our gratitude, we would like to confer the certificate of appreciation to Ms. Cristela Buen of CADAC, um, Professor Duca Pante, and as well as Ms. Sarah Oroz for being our panelists for today. Let me read the contents of the certificate. The certificate is proudly awarded to our dear panelists for sharing their valuable insights and reimagining Quezon City 2050 as city free of substance abuse, a policy brown bag discussion for PA 152 Urban and the Metropolitan Governance for the first semester of the academic year 2021 to 2022, given this 27th of November. Once again, we are very grateful and honored to all of you for being our panelists today and as well as our audiences from NCPAG and Tagig uh, 
Taguig State University. So for the last part of our event, may we invite uh, everyone to open their cameras if possible lang po with their internet connection so we can have our photo uh, up. Po. Ayan, so... Ayan, so um, in the count of three, I will be taking the photo. One, two, and three. Ayan. Thank you so much po for our dear panelists and as well as to Professor Elmer Soriano for gracing our event. Now to officially end the event, let us welcome again my co-host, um, Ms. Miriam, to deliver the closing remarks. For officially ending no, the uh, session, uh, we would like to thank our panelists for coming here today and joining our discussion despite their busy personal and professional schedules. Alam natin, uh, prevalent pa rin ang drug use dito sa bansa, but this, despite, of, despite all the efforts, uh, we have various policies, but why are they not enough? Uh, as we have highlighted, uh, the issue of drug use is a multi-sectoral issue and solving this entails the following but not limited to changing the narrative from uh, addict yan to tao din yan, uh, power of collaboration to address this global issue since uh, hindi ito makakaya ng iisang country lang or iisang sector lang. Uh, drug issue alone is a combination of uh, uh, problems sa uh, uh, healthier system, policy implementations, and others. Um, andyan din yung community-based and good implementation for these policies uh, to foster a positive environment for the youth and the next generations to come. Uh, this brown bag discussion is a good start po sa atin and sana may patunguhan nga po ito and magmaterialize into what we envision it to be. So, thank you po. Mara? Ayan, so this officially ends our policy brown bag discussion, sending everyone our warmest and sincerest gratitude for attending this uh, event. Be sure to check your registration emails for the e-certificates to our audiences who attended today. Again, this has been brought to you by PA152 Drug Demand, Drug Demand Reduction Team, and we will be ending the Zoom room now. So have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Maraming Thank salamat. you. Thank you so much, Thanks. Dr. Elmer. Thanks, Grace. Kamu sa kay Dex. Mahong Crisela. Thanks, Mahong Crisela. Thank you.